Hello, I'm Lisa Bien, and welcome to Bouncing Back. Concussions have become one of the biggest discussions in both sports and public health over the last few years. Once dismissed simply as seeing stars, concussions have been recently acknowledged for what they truly are, traumatic brain injuries. Only now are we learning the long-term effects of concussions, and what we are learning isn't very pretty. Concussions can have prolonged and severe negative effects on a person's life. But, as with other potentially life-changing injuries, people can and have bounced back from brain injuries. And we are going to meet with one very special person today. Let's get started. Welcome to Bouncing Back. Ten years ago, Tracy Yatsko suffered a brain injury in high school playing basketball. She had hoped to win a college scholarship for Division I track, but her brain injury sidelined her for the rest of her high school years. For years, she struggled through constant migraines, pain, and depression. But after 10 years of treatment, Tracy has bounced back and is now a full-time student here at Temple, studying broadcasting and creating a life she feared she would never have a chance to live. Thank you so much for being here today, Tracy. Thanks for having me. Also joining us today is Dr. Michael Sachs. He's a professor here at the Department of Kinesiology at the College of Public Health here at Temple University. He's the associate editor of Psychology of Running and the co-editor of Running as Therapy is an integrated approach. He has also written and contributed to numerous books, chapters and articles on sports psychology with a very particular focus on the exercise and running. In addition to studying athletes, he's also one, he has run two marathons. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. This is such a great topic. Um, ever since meeting Tracy, I really understand now that how serious concussions really are, right? So before we begin talking about the ser severity of concussions, what I'd like to do, Tracy, if, if you could take us back to the time that you were 17 years old. She's in high school. She's a junior. She's playing basketball. And she has life according to her, the perfect life. Can you take us back and tell us what happened? Definitely, life was great. I mean, I, I was starting, ba starting on my basketball team since my freshman year. I, I had great grades, everything was going perfectly. Um, I had these huge uh, dreams and inspirations to become a Division One athlete, as you have said, for track. And everything was going according to plan until one day I was playing a basketball game for my high school and I was going up for a rebound, and as I came down, I collided heads with another girl. Instantly, my eyes blacked out. I couldn't see anything, but I did gain my, my vision back. Um, it was right before halftime, so that, that was probably the best thing that happened. And from there, I don't remember the rest of the game. The only thing I do remember in halftime was the coaches talking, but it was all mumbled, and I just felt like someone was hitting me with a hammer. Wait, you played the rest of the game? Not the rest of oh, the game. Okay. Um, luckily, we were beating the team by a tremendous amount, so the starting five sat on the bench. Um, but after the game, I made it known that I was hit in the head, and I couldn't see straight. I was feeling very sick. and um, But I didn't want to go to the athletic trainer because we had a huge schedule coming up, and I was needed. And as an athlete, we suck it up. We've been taught to suck it up since, since we are young, and that's just embedded in us. And um, I continued to play a second game because of that. Wow. So um, I played actually the best game of my life. I think the adrenaline kicked in. Um, but afterwards, I collapsed. Um, and that, that, was, that was it for my athletic career. Uh, it slowly started to, the doctor said I would miss a few days of school turn into a few weeks of school and then a few months. I never went back to my junior year of high school because I was so sick. Um, the biggest part was I couldn't, I lost all sense of balance. So for me to get to point A to point B was a struggle. I either fell into the walls or I would fall to the ground because I had no sense, no sense of balance. Um, so that's really hard when you go from, you know, this amazing athlete to not being able to walk. Right. Um, so it was very hard because, you know, you're 17 and you're in the best moment of your life and with, with one hit to the head, it's just ripped from you. So it was very hard. It was a long recovery. Um, at the time, this was 10 years ago, 
So concussions weren't really big in the news. Um, the doctors that I went to didn't necessarily understand what was wrong with me. Uh, they knew I had a concussion and my treatment was post-concussive syndrome. And I was told that the migraines, the disabling migraines I was dealing with is something that will become my life. And I learned to accept that. Um, I was taking... So there was a point that after you were diagnosed with a concussion, a severe concussion, obviously life-changing concussion, that you basically said, okay, this is my life. This mm -hmm. is how I'm going to live my life. Yeah. And you lived your life for how many years like that? Probably sev a good seven to eight years. Wow. How, like, first of all, I give you so much credit for being here today. We're both sitting here like in awe, like, Thank and you. I can see how emotional it is for you because it was life changing, but kudos to you because you're here. So I am. after you got that diagnosis that you're going to be, you know, this is how, who you are. What happened next? Like, did you turn to your mother and say, no, I don't accept this. This is not going to be the way it's going to be. You know, I'm not going to lie. I was never... I wasn't always tough. It's easy to sit here and say, I fought through it. But you said in the beginning of the show, right? She said, well, I was an athlete. We're taught, we're taught to suck it up. Mm -hmm. So she, you were tough enough to suck it up. I mean, unfortunately, it's not what we wanted her to do, right? No, no. <laughs> but you were tough. You were probably mm -hmm. tougher than you think that you were. Yeah. It's part of the culture that athletes are tough. And as you said, you just sort of suck it up and go back and play and so on. Now, for, fortunately, I guess, uh, you know, physically you were able to play very well the second game, but then your body told you no more, mm -hmm. and then you were able to get uh, at least the treatment that you uh, needed. I find it astounding. We'll go right back to you, but I'm still like a little astounded that she played. You know, she got hit at your second this the second game. You know, you, you, were you diagnosed with a concussion after you the first time you got hit? I mean, the first game I didn't. After the first game, I didn't see a doctor, so I technically wasn't diagnosed, but I had a concussion. Athletes are great at, at if, if you don't share with the athletic trainer or a physician or somebody that I'm having these symptoms, and if you're not exhibiting, you know, balance issues or so on, then we assume that's fine. I mean, there are lots of athletes who might have gotten a similar hit to the head and nothing happens. And, but in your case, the, just that right angle or whatever it might have been caused the uh, severe concussion that you had. It's so... It, I'm learning, you know, as a mother of, of a young son that plays lots of sports, it's like I I'm, I'm just want to keep talking. So you're, here you are, you're, uh, you're, 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 you get this diagnosis, this is the way you're going to be, and what, what happens next for you? At first, it was rough. Um, life became extremely hard, and uh, there were many of times I wanted to give up because from morning to night, it was disabling pain. No one wants to live that way. Um, so it was really tough, but at the same time, you can only take so much pain. And I knew, you know, the effects it was having on my family and my mom and my sister, they're, they're my rocks. Um, you know, it was hard on them too, and I didn't want it to be. So there were many times when, you know, I wanted to end it. I wanted to just go to sleep and never wake up. Um, but I knew that I, I deserve more. My mom, my sister deserve, deserve more. Um, so you just you got to talk yourself, you know, it, depression can swallow you and you can get in a deep hole. And I was in a deep hole for a very long time. But at the end of the day, I wanted to be able to walk outside. I wanted to be able to enjoy the sunlight and, you know, just things that I couldn't enjoy anymore. And I just started fighting back. And I may not have been becoming more healthy brain wise, but emotionally and psychologically, I was fighting back because you have to. So you're a lot stronger than you just said, right? <laughs> she said she wasn't that strong, so congratulations. And if you want some water, uh, we'll give you a minute. We'll give you a break. Thank you. Well, I have to give Tracy credit for, for doing that. I mean, not everybody is able to pull themselves mm -hmm. out of that you know, deep level of depression. And she obviously has been uh, successful in doing so. Now, have the physical um, symptoms and so on subsided so that you're able to go to school and so on? Oh, absolutely. I mean, okay. I've been healthy for about two years now um, after finding a doctor in Rhode Island who diagnosed me properly and treated me properly. Um, so that was the big problem for eight years is I was misdiagnosed and I was mistreated. Excuse me. Um, but after being treated properly, I was, I, I'm able to live life again and I had to start school very slowly because for almost 10 years, my brain was trained 
to, to be sick and to have pain and reading was, gave me anxiety. I, I didn't know how to read. I mean, I, I'm, I was used to reading and getting sick. So because you were putting your head down and reading or I think just a, um, concentration and one of the things that we often forget is that the concussions not only have significant effects from an athletic standpoint mm -hmm. but particularly for high school kids or or college students and so on you can't concentrate you mm -hmm. can't sit there and 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 read the books and do your assignments for hours and so on you're there for a couple of minutes and then your brain starts to hurt and so on so there are significant effects from an mm -hmm. academic standpoint as well from the medical perspective can you tell us exactly what exactly is a concussion you know we hear yesterday i was watching football and it was seahawks dallas game and a seahawks player got hit i mean for a good 10 minutes the the the, the game stopped they brought over the stretchers the medical you know units from both teams were there they strapped him up, people were praying, you know, and then 10 minutes later, we got an announcement that said, oh, it was just a concussion, just a concussion. And, and now since I've met Tracy, I thought, well, that's pretty <clears throat> serious. But to the average person, when we hear just a concussion, we're like, oh, well, good, because on the stretcher, he looked like, God forbid, he couldn't walk again. So can you medically define what it is happens to our body when we have a concussion? Sure. Well, I mean, the, <clears throat> the very basic idea of a concussion is that your brain is sort of rocked back and forth a little bit. And uh, it doesn't necessarily take a, an impact. You don't necessarily have to get hit. You can have a sudden movement and do that as well. And so that then has some cellular um, uh, effects and so on in the brain. And that's what produces or results in the migraines and the fatigue and the nausea and so on to the rest of the body, et cetera. I mean, the, the brain is a, is a very, you know, relatively small organ, but it's obviously the most important one in our body in many, many respects. And in order for us to function, it has to be working ideally at an optimal level. And if it's compromised in that sense, then you're not able to do your daily tasks of being able to concentrate and have balance uh, and so on. Uh, the case in the football game, I mean, I'm sure they wanted to make sure that there were no uh, spinal cord injuries or things like that, particularly if he had been knocked out for a little bit. The other thing is you don't have to be knocked out to have a concussion. So in your case, mm -hmm. it doesn't sound like you were nope. knocked out. And so in actually a minor only a minority of cases, that's one of the myths that's out there and one of the concerns that sometimes people think, oh, I didn't get knocked out, so I'm fine. Not necessarily, only in a minority of cases, a small minority is the person, does the person actually lose consciousness? But you can still get those kinds of significant effects. Now some 85%, 90% of concussions are, are mild and the individual comes back in a week or two and everything's fine as if nothing happened before. But in you know, five, 10% of the cases, they're moderate or as in Tracy's case, they're severe. And fortunately in Tracy's case, she got treatment so now she's back to the normal. But there are some individuals who have you know, post-concussive syndrome who never uh, fully recover. Well, it's interesting doing all this research for the show. I also read that um Concussions are the most undiagnosed disease, and I was surprised to have it referred to as a disease. I've never heard that, never heard that before. Is that new, or is that? Uh, I'm not sure we would usually call it a disease. I mean, I looked it up in dictionary.com, okay. and, and it's there. It meets the <laughs> it criteria. It meets the criteria, but uh, but whatever we want to label it, I mean, it's certainly. Uh, it's often undiagnosed in the sense that you have the athletes, you have the mindset of the athlete, we call it the sport ethic, where the idea is you persist in the face of all obstacles. And if you just get, uh, you know, you call it get a ding or get your bell rung, you know, that's fine. I mean, that's part of playing your sport and you just keep on playing. Uh, in Tracy's case, it reached to a point where physically her body could not uh, continue to play and it, it as you say, she, she collapsed. In other cases, you sometimes will see on the football field, it was with the Eagles last year, I think there was a player just sort of staggering around, which is pretty scary. The athletic trainers were attending to somebody else, so nobody sort of saw him and he stayed in the game. Uh, so they, they've corrected that, uh, at least the NFL has, in terms of not missing something like that again. But, uh, you know, if you don't have somebody just staggering around like that, then you might think everything's fine, and the, the body is amazingly able to continue playing uh, even with that. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's uh, amazing how some individuals who get a concussion can continue to play well, not remember anything about the rest of the game, and then afterwards get that diagnosis. Well, the numbers are staggering, too. The numbers of people, 50,000 people die every year from concussions, and I'm sure you 
heard these numbers. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> 235,000 people are diagnosed or hospitalized, I mean, hospitalized from this, and 1.1 are treated and, and released from the emergency department. So are, are there tips that we could offer people? You know, it's interesting because we're sitting here talking about sports. There's probably other ways you can get a concussion. You can be in a car accident, your brain Absolutely. gets jolted. And, you know, there's many times, I know myself, I was, you know, hit in the back. I was rear-ended once, and they wanted to take me to the hospital. Like, I know I'm fine. But maybe, you know, how do we know if we're having, we have a concussion? What are some tips we could be looking for? Well, certainly things like uh, dizziness, uh, uh, seeing stars or lights or so on, inability to concentrate, nausea, balance problems, and so on. I mean, anything that's out of the range of normal. I mean, you know what you feel like, you know, what normal is for you. And if you don't feel normal, then that's something to get checked. Now, maybe it has nothing to do with that, and you're just getting the flu or something, mm -hmm. and that's, that's great, because the <laughs> flu is easy to get over, sometimes concussions or, uh, or not. So, so anything that's out of the range of normal for you. Now, on an athletic field, you can see if you get you know, a, a collision, usually head to head, but it could be head to knee, head to the goal post, close to the ground, get hit by uh, uh, you know, an implement in, in the sport, you know, a field hockey stick or something like that. I mean, that's an obvious case where, okay, well, maybe we ought to check that out a little further. Right. Uh, but if the athletic trainers or coach or nobody else catches that, but you feel something different, then that's when you need to get checked because the concussions are not something to fool around with, obviously. So you're, when did you start Temple again? Last semester. This La is my this second, is your semester, second semester. Here. So yeah. you, I, I'm, I know you get upset or emotional about this, but your mom and your sister, you say, have really been the ones that have gotten you back to the place where you are today. Mm -hmm. Tell us what that journey was like and, you know, when you did you go to a lot of different doctors until you finally found the doctor that said it was quite a journey uh at first and it was such a slow process because like i said uh doctors didn't understand what was wrong with me other than it was just a concussion and i'm pretty sure they've even said that you know you have a concussion you know deal with it um, but i've been all throughout the state pittsburgh philadelphia allentown uh, to some of the top doctors in the state dealing with concussions and it was just a daily battle. It was a, a daily battle because I wasn't ever getting better. And uh, I, I was here in Philadelphia for a long time, so the commute was, was even worse because when you, when you have a concussion, the last thing you want is trees and movement. And you know, it was a two hour ride to just to get to the hospital. Um, so that was even more tough. But it was, it was a long process and it was a hard process because I felt alone and I felt that no, the doctors weren't believing me. And they didn't understand why everyone else around me was getting better and I was getting worse. Um, so it's, that's, that makes it easy to give up because the one person you need to understand is the doctor. And you know, this was 10 years ago, I felt like they were all giving up on me because their methods weren't working. Um, so it was, that was really hard. But your mom and your sister and you never gave up on yourself. Never. We talk a lot on this show about self-talk. And I heard you say that, you know, that's an athletic, you know, af af athletes tend to, you know, talk to themselves, push themselves through it. I've, I'm finding today in today's academic, whether you're on a college campus, with, just in life, we have so many things going on. We have to all talk to ourselves. And you and I had a great conversation about that, about self-talk. Tell us today what you tell yourself when you're having a hard day or a difficulty and how that self-talk has really resonated and helped you push yourself to the next level. So I'm definitely talking to myself all the time, especially as a college student because it's, college itself is stressful. And I come from a life of 10 years of anxiety attacks and stress. So I, bless, thank you, Thank you. I'm able to talk myself out of it. I, f I know when an anxiety attack is coming. Now, excuse me, what, I'm sorry to interrupt you, I'm just curious. Is the anxiety attack part of the um, having a concussion? Is that like a, can I that mean, be? It could be, uh, the, the not, I mean, not everybody who has concussions experiences that, but that can certainly be one of the. Okay, of okay, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> and that could be related to the anxiety. Yeah, I was just wondering if that's. Not being able to deal with one's life. It's not a, not a direct effect necessarily mm -hmm. of the concussion itself but all the other stuff coming together. Certainly, I mean, I mean, I, I admire Tracy greatly. I mean, being able to deal with this for, you know, seven, eight years, not having an answer, not getting better is, uh, I mean, is, is extremely difficult. And, and give amazing. Mm -hmm. for being able to come back from it. 
And she did game day this weekend, so I'm even more excited about that. That's so, awesome. <laughs> I'm so proud of her. I saw it on Facebook. I was like, that's my girl. Go, Tracy. So I'm sorry, you were you still do the self-talk and you, mm -hmm. have, anx you have anxiety and stress mm -hmm. from just everyday life right so now. So right? I'm definitely lucky enough to not get to the point of anxiety, um, but with some people just don't understand that this is new to me. School is still, I mean, it's my first year of full-time classes. Uh, so that's a struggle in itself because when I'm reading, even though I'm not getting sick, it's like my body wants to get sick and like it's waiting for me to get sick. So when I'm not sick, it's like, wow, this is, this is great. Um, so it just takes me a little bit longer to read because it, there's just this underlying stress that, you know, this is very new to me. Um, but at the end of the day, I have to remember three years ago, I never thought I would be in school. I never thought I would be able to read. So I, it's, a, it's a learning process and it's stressful. I'm not gonna lie, being a college student is stressful. Well, being a college student, <laughs> It's stressful at, at, it, at all costs. Mm -hmm. Now you add the whole, I have a, a, I'm recovering from a concussion on top of it, and it's even more stressful. So kudos to you. I'm doing it. You are doing, doing it. it. If it's up to me, I'm going to make sure you continue to do it. And I will. I'm see you on a national TV one day. Um, ESPN one day, sports broadcast. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you. From your lips to God's ears, right? <laughs> so what else can we do as a society to raise the awareness of concussions and how very severe they really are? Well, certainly there are educational programs that are available out there and those need to go to all the youth sport athletes and their parents and the organizations. I mean, it'd be great to have a requirement that your kid can't play sports unless both the, the child and the parents, uh, you know, take some online uh, concussion education protocol and pass it kind of thing. Uh, I don't know that we'll quite get there, but certainly making it available is, is key. Uh, that educational piece is where it starts. And then the other piece is for making sure that coaches and athletic trainers are especially vigilant and having everybody understand that if the coach and athletic trainer has any concern that a concussion might have occurred, they see something on the field, that child gets pulled and gets examined, doesn't go back in the game, gets examined carefully. Uh, maybe if nothing's there, it might be able to go back, but uh, certainly gets examined very carefully, followed up after the game. I mean, in college sports, you can be a little bit more confident that things are uh, sort of being done properly, but particularly at the youth sport level, at the high school level, as where Tracy was uh, when this occurred. I mean, you want to make sure that people know what the issues are, know that the athletes are, are likely not to self-report if something happens, and the parents need to be able to step up and say the interests of the child are paramount, and we're going to pull the child until we can figure it. Make sure that the child is okay, and if the child is not okay, then make sure appropriate treatment is provided. So it's interesting just talking to you before we started taping the show about, you know, we, we were talking about where a child can get hit, you know, in the chest, God forbid, and then they should have the you know, type of medical equipment. And myself as a parent, I don't sit there and think about that. You know, we walk up to the ball field, we walk, we take our kid to play basketball, and we go, okay, and we hope and pray that something, you know, <coughs> terrible doesn't happen. Are there tips that we could offer people today that say, as a parent, as, a, as an athlete, as anybody that may feel that they have a concussion or that they should be prepared for? Basically, at the sports level, I guess, we'll start. Well, certainly the idea would be that parents would have realistic expectations of what their child is able to do, that you're playing at a level where the child is capable and comfortable, that if the child is just learning the sport, you don't put them in a, in a high-level game where they're not capable of keeping up and might be more dangerous not only to themselves but the other uh, athletes there. And then sort of knowing what to look for uh, if there's something that happens, either uh, a concussion related or some other injury. And then having, as Tracy said, maybe initially she wasn't able to find the right folks. Now even the, if, when you found sports med uh, medicine, medical professionals who had some experience in concussions, they may not necessarily have been, a they weren't able to help unfortunately, but usually uh, if you can find a sports medicine professional who's experienced concussions, most of the time that in individual will be able to help. And you should know or find out who those individuals are in the area and go to them. The general practitioner may or may not have uh, some background at all, but usually you want to go to the expert. I liked what you said. It was a great piece of advice. It's, it's also for athletes to know their level of play. Uh, you know, whether it's my son on a baseball field or you playing or any athlete, how many times I hear this a lot, 
oh, you're okay, get up, go back out and play. I hear it more than I want to hear it, you know, oh, it's just a sprain, or oh, it's just this, you know, and I'm the opposite. I'm like, oh, let's take him to the emergency room. <laughs> so it's just interesting to me. This is a great discussion we're having. So what's next for you is what I'm curious about. Um, well, I'm taking it day by day. I have to. Uh, and I'm enjoying the process, even though it can be stressful. But, you know, it's an amazing thing how sports was completely ripped from my life. And that was, at 17, all, that was my life, sports. I, I didn't know anything else um, because that's what I was good at. And now, I, you know, I just recently decided, why not get into sports broadcasting? Pa my passion has been sports my whole life, so why not talk about it? So, in a way, it was ripped from me, but now it, it's, it's come full circle. You know, I'm, I may not be on the court, but I can be on the sideline talking about it. And so that's like, that's the really cool thing, how, how life happens. And you have to bounce back. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> Tracy can be a great advocate for, uh, you know, dealing with concussions, being able to bounce back, to come back, and still being successful. And so hopefully in 10 years we can meet again, and Tracy will have some time from her ESPN gig to come and, and uh, meet with us again. Well, it's funny you say that because that's exactly what I was going to say. When you said, when I said you really what's next, I was going to say, we know we're going to see Tracy on the national level one day. We know we're going to see Tracy talking about concussions one day. Mm -hmm. And with that, we're going to say thank you to both of you. Thank and you. Thank you. It's been a great show. Thank, thank you, you so much. Though the conversation on concussions has been long overdue, the condition and those who have struggled have bounced back from it are finally receiving the attention they deserve. If you or a loved one are involved in athletics, it's important to take the time to educate yourself on the risk of concussion, as well as how you can protect yourself. Protecting yourself isn't the same as avoiding sports or physical activities. The benefits very much outweigh the risks. But when you're involved, be sure you're smart, careful, and safe. Thank you so much for joining us today. And once again, I'm Lisa Bien, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Bouncing Back.